Hello and good evening. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Borough, uh, the FAU podcast for and by fans. My name is Dan, known as FAU for show uh, on the FAUowlsnest.com forum. I'm here with the usual suspects. Uh, we got Jack and Aaron. Say hello, fellas. Hello. How y'all doing? Jack Wooden here. <laughs> <laughs> so Jack, Jack's peppy. Jack's, Jack's, Jack's got a lot going on. That's great. Wait, so uh, tonight... We, um, we, we got a lot to talk about. We kind of, one of the things I want to talk about is kind of taking a step back. Let's, yes, things have been, things have been pretty low. It's been a pretty, pretty stressful time here in our country. And, um, we're, we're going to take a step back. We're going to look, look at a couple of things that, that we think are c- kind of contributing to, uh, how we are currently playing. Uh, and then we'll look at, um, we'll look at UTEP and then kind of wrap things up. So this, we're not sure how, how long this show is going to go. It might be one of our normal ones. But um, I guess to get started, as far as taking a step back, that you think of the, the – looking overall at the program, uh, things could be a heck of a lot worse for us. And I know Owl fans probably don't want to hear that, but we here at Inside the Borough, we're, we're here to be the, the voice of reason um, for Owl Nation. So – you look at other programs, I mean, let's just take example of other programs in our conference. Um, everybody knows what, what a disaster UNT is, you know, firing their coach after losing to a NFCS team. Um, UCA. Who is also, sorry, as North, Portland State also had an interim head coach at the time and still lost by, you know, what was it, 50 points at home to Portland State. Yeah. So, yeah, so go ahead after that. I think you're about to say the one I'm looking forward to. Go ahead, give it yeah. to me. Uh, UCF. Oh, oh yeah, you, you gave it to me. Perfect. Oh, are are they? What are they now? Zero and six? Are they? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> um, who's? Uh, well, you guys gonna be out here? Wyoming's having a tough time. Kansas is uh, is a is a dumpster fire. You know, like we're not. Things things could be a lot worse. Um, and, and before before I know a lot of people may look at this and like, oh, they're just gonna make a bunch of excuses for everything. We're not making excuses for the way the program is. We're just trying to be a little bit of a voice of reason um, to kind of uh, not rain on everybody's parade, kind of to have the rain clouds pass away. So one of the things, you know, so I was going over the depth chart. Uh, the depth chart was released yesterday or maybe it was today. I can't remember. And that got me thinking about if you, if you look at the names on the depth chart and you look at the classes that they are, uh, we have – uh, I think what was it? I, I wrote down like 37 freshmen, redshirt freshmen, or sophomores out of the 60-something members on, on the two deep uh, playing. Like, and like they're on the two deep and they're playing significant time. That's that's about it's more than half of the depth chart has only been here for for at least two years, at most two years. Excuse me. Um, so. That is again. It's, it's not an excuse, but it, it's it's a reality. I would say. I, you know, and that's exactly a good point. I mean, for me, I want to kind of attribute it to what I'm a lot familiar with is that my time in the service. That's basically asking a bunch of privates and PFCs, guys who haven't been in very long, to say, "You're now leaving this fire team squad out on patrol. Go out and do it and step up big." We as corporals and sergeants are only going to be there if you need it. And that can't be happening on the football field. You need that veteran leadership to come up and say, we got to produce because we're the, we're the leaders on this team. And that's not for some odd reason, except for maybe Quest, who I've seen him during the games all the time. Trying to get people fired up, but Craven doing the same thing. But there's no other real big people stepping up and doing the same thing. It's the same people that everybody's talking about. You, it, there's no way that Otto's and Jalen and should be going on, around firing up the defense because, I mean, they shouldn't be. For me, they've been playing like lights out all year. So, I mean, something's got it. You know, somebody's got to go around and basically say, it's time for us to step up in, in the upperclassmen. Yeah, uh, Dan is going to talk about a bit about the recruiting classes, the upperclassmen, um, the recruiting classes when they came in um, during the Pliny years. The Pliny was the guy uh, that brought him in. Uh, Quez is one of those guys. I remember Quez was a JUCO um, transfer from Mississippi. Um, 
Awesome. He's one of the leaders. Cravon, yeah, definitely one of the leaders. Uh, but he was he's kind of a question mark coming in as some more other guys. Um, Marcile is a leader on the offensive line. He's a senior. And then Jensen. I mean, Jensen's a senior, but he was a walk-on. He, he, he was, yeah, he wasn't even in the recruiting class. He was a freaking walk-on. We, we offered him, we gave him a scholarship after his uh, freshman or sophomore year. Um, so, I mean, this, I, I mean, Dan, do you go into the numbers if, if you still have them on the recruiting classes. Yeah, so, that we have. Um, and, and again, this is one of the, one of the things that, that I want to stress is, is these are, these are just merely the facts. We're presenting the facts. We're not trying to make excuses because all three of us here believe that we should be at least three and three. If we had a healthy quiz and maybe two or three less penalties against Tulsa, I would say that we'd be four and two. Um, but let's, so, so let's say, so these juniors and seniors, these, these who are supposed to be the leaders of the team of the defense and offense uh, coming in, we had the 112th uh, recruiting class and, and we kind of briefly, uh, that was in 2012, 112 in 2012. Uh, so that's our senior class right now. Two hundred, uh, 2013 was 106. So it's not like we're bringing that at that time. We had the highest um, ranking recruits coming in. So um, that's something that just keep that in mind that um, the recruiting classes, we weren't lighting it up. Excuse me. And um, another thing to, to think about is we, we briefly kind of went through the, the recruiting class for that year and looked at who's still playing, who's on the team, and it was maybe a third of the recruiting class was even still here, um, not even, let's say, contributing all the time. So that's something, again, I it, mean, it, it's, it's, it's a fact. That is, that is a fact of what's happening and what is still preventing us from, um, from winning. And, and a lot of people are saying, it, oh, Charlie's a great PR guy. Charlie's, you know, a great guy to be speaking, voice of the program. Well, that's the job of a college head coach, in, essentially, in today's, you know, side. But he's also got to be a great recruiter. And we looked, and I kind of went over the past two recruiting classes with Charlie Partridge. He's brought in talent. And, Dan, you, when you went over the numbers, they're contributing on the football field. And, I mean, if – we give them time. I know people don't want to hear that. The program will turn that corner eventually. It may be next year. I know people don't want to hear it. It may be next year. It may be in the final year of his contract, which will probably end up saving his job. The talent's coming in. It's just we're playing with a mixed bag right now, I want to say. Yeah, well, I mean, I, can, I know a lot of people are going to say uh, Charlie's not supposed to be just a PR guy and just a good recruiter. He also needs to be – a good game, game manager, a good game manager, a uh, solid uh, developmental coach. Uh, and those are some knocks on him right now. And, uh, you know, those people, you know, they, they, they obviously have a point there right now. But I, this, the inexperience with this team um, is, is alarming. And I'm definitely willing to give the guys, uh, the coaches – uh, a bit more time. It is frustrating. And, I mean, these, these guys, they're not just collecting their paychecks and going to the beach and relaxing. These guys are getting – I'm talking about these guys and the coaches. Uh, they're getting no sleep right now trying to fix things. Right. Remember, they, they, they brought their livelihoods here. They moved their families here um, to not just, you know, make money, but because they believe in this program. They believe in this university and in these players. They're not just going to – be okay with with losing all the time that's not what anyone wants how, how can you you know what what kind of man is going to want to go home after another loss to his kids and say well i guess i'll have a paycheck next week i'm not sure honey well, who, well, who wants to do that it's demoralizing so they're, they're think, trying to fix and that's i mean to me that brings up a kind of good point so every everybody's everybody's mad at, at every single coach and you know there's a, there's a lot of stuff happening on twitter and it's just kind of like again what the kind of the for me, the, the theme of this week uh, overall is let's let's take a step back. First of all, did we really think that we were going to beat Marshall? Um, okay. Marshall has the top, I think, the top ranked defense in uh, in Conference USA. I think they're top forty in the country. Um, Jack, you mentioned something. They're like number one in the country in, in uh, 
causing three and outs. Yeah, yeah. Going like, going into the game, they were number one in the nation and going three and outs, uh, tied with Alabama. You know that school in Tuscaloosa, whatever, man. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, did anybody think that going in with the redshirt freshman that uh, as our as our quarterback and and a, a, an inconsistent offense? And again, I'm not. This is not an excuse. I'm not saying that everything is is fine and dandy. There's a lot of problems. There are a lot of problems in in what's happening, but. I wanted to take a step back and say there, there are, there is still some potential. Um, and you know, there's no point in, in continuing to argue about how bad we are um, because that's, I don't know, that that's not who I am. That's not who I am as a fan. And I think, you know, the rest of us um, on here are not as a fan. So yeah, we're expressing our frustrations. I mean, the, the, the inconsistent, unbelievably inconsistent coordinator play uh, or offensive calls um are just is, is mind blowing and it's it's unbelievably frustrating, um, but that could come down a lot of it to execution and if the the, the quality of the player or or what's going on um, isn't quite as high, that that has a major impact. So, um, let's see. There was one other thing uh, that I wanted to talk about. No, I think that was it. Any any last any last thoughts? Uh, any last thoughts on Marshall? Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I mean, like you said, then Twitter, and then I was definitely, definitely part of it on Saturday, you know, towards the end of the first half, you know. That, I think we all were. I think we all were. And I mean, I mean, I'm a combat fat, so I get frustrated very easily. My wife can attest to this. But, I mean, come on. One timeout, you can at least run the ball once. If you don't break it into the end zone, you call timeout and run two more pass plays. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, talking about the end of the half there, yeah. I mean, that was that was bad. I mean, there, there's no, there's absolutely no, there's no other way to put it. That was frustrating and that was bad. And then the next time we got down there, we ran the ball and we scored. I mean, Perry Rodriguez is just proven to be that guy who will be stepping up into that role next year and currently this year. And they didn't utilize him. I mean, it got frustrating. Like you said, it's frustrating right now. When when Devon Johnson had that long uh, <laughs> run on the second play from scrimmage, I wanted to gouge my eyes out uh, with a very blunt knife. Um, yeah. it, it, it was deja vu, and it, I mean, I'm I was in the press box of the game. I, I'm very appreciative of the Alness to give me that opportunity um, to go ahead and do that. I'm up there, and you know, it's very professional and everything, and I'm just banging my head on the freaking wall on the on the table there. Um, in disgust that we've learned nothing. It was disbelief. That, that I was it like, really was. It's it's like yeah. someone who's always about giving coaches and players, and, and a lot of people benefit of the doubt. And then I see this, and it's like there, there's no winning. There, there there's nothing I can do here. Yeah. Uh, and, and even even you know when he got out, and the second string running back got out, and third string running back wasn't doing well too so well. And they put their fourth string guy in. There's that one play. I think it was in the I can't remember either, either third or fourth, but it definitely was in the second half. It was like a 60-yard run for their uh, four-string guy. It was a pitch uh, to the right, right side of the field, uh, right into the end zone, uh, 60 yards. And it's like even their four-string guy, and we have no clue what we're doing. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it was really frustrating. It really was. Yeah. And, again, the, the offense um, the offense did the defense no favors. One – give me one with the safety, but also consistent short fields – um, and I think that's that's kind of a theme this year is the offense hasn't – I mean, you, you think of Buffalo. Um, Buffalo, the offense lost the game. The offense – the offense – our offense lost the – lost totally lost that game with the amount of um, fumbles that they had and, and turnovers that they had. So um, – and I, I think one of the things that, that nobody's talking about anymore because it's it's been improved and because it's been improved, nobody wants to talk about it, is the turnovers. Like – even the Charlotte game, I'll, I'll say that was no pun intended a wash, um, just because of nobody could hold on to the ball there. Um, thank you, Jack. Um, but Rice, we held on to the ball, and against Marshall, we held on to the ball. So things are improving there. I think our um, our turnover differential is now like only minus two, where a couple weeks ago it was minus eight. So we're, we're heading in the right direction as far as turnovers go. Nobody wants to talk about that because that's an area of improvement. 
um, as, I mean, as the penalties. Yeah. yeah. No one, no one really likes talking about when things go right. You know, whether that's not our fan base, it's just how sports have become or just, right, absolutely. you know, per- perception has become as of late. Uh, these coaches are going to be doing things the right way. They're going to be recruiting uh, uh, good young men who will represent the university and the community well, uh, majority of which will be coming from our backyards in South Florida. Um, and they're, they're really going to be doing everything the right way. I mean, you can even see the cards that they, uh, that they give the players, you know, saying that I will not do drugs, I will be on time. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, be a good citizen, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we're doing things the right way. And you know, like I said, with the turnovers and penalties, and we fix those, and so many people are complaining about that. And then the people who do things the right way get crapped on all the time, <laughs> you know? And then, and then when they don't do things the right way, I and mean, look, look what happens. They, they, they get, you know, say, oh, fire them, oh, fire this guy, oh, everyone sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's... If we're going to talk about the bad, we got to talk about the good, you know. Right. And we got to take everything with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that the one good, like you mentioned, Dan, was the penalties, except for that too many men in the backfield. That sucked. And I think maybe one bad holding call that I think kind of said the we were driving there. I think after we got the ball back in the second half, that kind of killed momentum a little bit. What was really a well officiated. Well played game by the off by the team penalty wise because I don't think we had that many penalties except for that targeting targeting call which was another bad call which we won't go into. Yeah, that was that was garbage. Yeah, um, we, we we could use that to segue on and segue into uh, UTEP then. Well, if no one else has anything. Well, I, before before we get to UTEP. Oh yeah, shoot, my bad. Go ahead. Thing, um, well, I guess it's it's kind of ha- has stuff to relate. Now, I want to get your thoughts, Charlie. For the first time, mentioned potentially um, playing our highest rated quarterback ever, uh, Daniel Parr. So currently he's redshirting, but Partridge mentioned that um, it's uh, it's it's a possibility, and he he said, "Oh, it's all along. It's 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 been a possibility." Now, recently, I think Brian Wright said that uh, it was you know guaranteed that Quest was going to play, and Charlie seems to be kind of mentioning. I think Charlie may may have even said that um, Quest is I mean, he he's currently listed one on the depth chart. But um, I'm curious to get your thoughts uh, on uh, pulling Parr's red shirt halfway through the season after you guys go. Uh, my thoughts. Do it. Wave off. Wave off. Don't do it. Keep the red shirt because we already got, I mean, Driscoll, I mean, let Driscoll and Parr battle it out for the starting job next year. Keep Parr's red shirt. Jack brought up before the podcast even got, keep him until he's 22, you know, 23, you know, and if need be, because he keep his red shirt because in that way, in case Driscoll gets hurt, Parr can fill in for him. You know, I mean, I mean, I don't want to talk about quarterbacks getting hurt, but it's football. It can happen. If, oh, sorry, sorry, Aaron. Yeah, if if we still had Tyler Huntley on the uh, commit list, I would say, yeah, pull it. Why not? He could use the experience. Uh, but he's gone. Parr is the future. Parr is going to be uh, – he is, like you said, the highest rated quarterback we've ever had. We will have in a long time. Well, I don't want to say a long time, but, you know, in, in a while. Um, he, he's a future, you know, let him learn as much as he can be in the weight room as much as he can. Um, and you know, let's not focus on that, especially now that Quez is, I mean, as close as hundred percent as you can get without being hundred percent. He's 99.9, uh, which means they're going to play book is going to open wide open all over right. again. Uh, you know, which, which could, you know, help a lot, obviously. Uh, well, I, you have, you have to keep him on the red shirt. You can't even, it's not even up for discussion. Sorry. See, here, here's here's my my thing. Oh no, no, don't do it. Look, <laughs> it's not like I'm I'm super in favor because it is it is halfway through the season. But if he is going to be our future quarterback, um, he still he would still be here for three years, and we should be able to pull. And if he's going to be as good as we think he's going to be, and take us to a level that you know we think we can get to we shouldn't have a problem attracting another top quality QB. So it's like, why keep the red shirt on? I mean, I guess if it's still a, a devel- developmental thing, but if you think that if coach thinks that he's ready and he's going to help us win a ball game, I'm, 
I don't, I don't mind it because again, it's, it's not like he's, he's a senior and then we're going to lose him next year. We, we would still have at the very least three years of, of him being here. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 I guess I, I kind of played, played the other side uh, of that. Okay. I'm not, Wait, I mean, we get I, it. it. Wouldn't be, it, and this is again. This is only if Quez is hurt, and they really feel that they need to go this route. Um, and and if he, who I'd say, you you have to go with whoever's going to give us the best chance to win the game. So I mean, it, it's just we're we're gonna waste an entire year of having this guy unless we're gonna give him the Brandon Dottie treatment at Western Kentucky. We can find him six years out of our rear end. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, I mean, we're gonna waste away, you know, one year with him or take the risk of that uh for what a win over utep and a win over old dominion like, like do we really think he's gonna his freshman year, he's gonna change so much right away that he makes us favored over western kentucky he will put it put in a fight against uf watch out the gators at the swamp we're coming after you with uh this guy this kid from dwyer i mean I, I i just don't see it right now so many people are talking about you know it's pull pars red shirt the same people are saying the season's over. The season's wasted. Fire everybody. Well, if the season's wasted, then why waste his red shirt? Exactly. That's just that's you know. I just I just don't see how people can have it both ways. I agree with Jack. I mean, keep him in the weight room. Let him put on some more muscle. I mean, I mean, Coach Partridge said right before the season began, he's still a freshman. He looks at times like a senior leader. At other times, he looks like a freshman. Yeah, let, let him get swole. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but not the Will Greer route. We want the the next. <laughs> oh, but on what? Ten ten months? Ten months? I mean, give them time. I mean, if they want to pull it, I mean, that's a coach's decision. We're fans. We we can't influence that. But I mean, if I don't know, if coach watches the show or not. So, Coach Patrick, if you do, do watch, this, please give it all consideration before you do pull his record. <laughs> Coach is our number one fan. What are you talking about, Aaron? He, he loves us. <laughs> Don't pull it. So, uh, so UTEP, we're going we're gonna to do UTEP yeah. here, Daniel? So, yeah, go. I mean, um, I, heading into UTEP, I don't know much about them. Um, I don't either. I, I didn't even realize that they were in Texas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some connections. Uh, wasn't the old FAU offensive coordinator – Gary Nord, their previous head coach at one point. Uh, way before my time, boys. Yeah, that, that's, that's – sorry, that, that's bringing up some, some – I'll be over here if you need me, all right? Things. So, um, I think what, – what's the – the line that went up to, like, six, I think, in favor of you? Yeah. yeah, some places have it at six. Others have it at six and a half. We'll see where that goes later on in the week. Yeah. So, other um, than, other than th- them being in, in Texas uh, – Yes. And they have orange helmets – Ah, they do. Uh, they do. Orange that's and blue. About all that I know. All that um, and they're the miners. They not in, work week for me, as you can tell. They're they're over eighteen, so they're not that kind of miners. They're uh, you know, digging for stuff. Uh, Aaron, you mentioned earlier about Jalen Young and a targeting call. I was gonna segue into that that uh, because that targeting call happened in the second half of the Marshall game, uh, Young will be uh, unable to play in the first half of UTEP. Uh, I mean, we can speculate all we want about who's going to replace him in most of the game. Most likely they'll be using a co- by committee, um, really, um, to fill in his shoes. And he'll obviously come in to match along um, O.C. Rose in the second half. Uh, UTEP, they were kind of a dark horse in the West going into the uh, season. Then they lost Aaron Jones, uh, their star running back. I mean, he's right up there with Kenneth Dixon and Devon Johnson. You probably put him ahead of Devon Johnson, to be honest, and best running backs in the league. And, you know, since they lost him uh, to injury for the whole year, the whole season, uh, everything just went downhill. Uh, you got to feel pretty bad for him. Um, they're, not even gonna, they're not even sure who's going to be quarterback uh, this week. Hey, sound familiar, guys? Um, <laughs> Leftwich. Um, was it Marcus Leftwich? I really don't want to <laughs> say his first name and be completely wrong. I'm pretty sure I think it was Marcus Leftwich. Again, it's setting as well, all doing you know busy week. Um, he's coming off injury. They had a bye week last week, um, so he had time to heal. Uh, some of the other quarterback Mets is pretty solid. Um, I mean that, that's that's really it. Uh, they're 
coach Sean uh, Kugler is somewhat is kind of in the hot seat over there. I mean, they expected big things. He's not performing. And you know how Texas football is. Uh, they want to win. They want to win now. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens over there in the Sun Bowl. Beautiful venue over there uh, in El Paso. Never been there. I think I, I think I know about the Sun Bowl. If you're on one side of the stadium, we can look into Mexico. I think that's about as much as I know about it. Right, it that's was built. As as I know as well. Built right into the mountains. There, it is gorgeous. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, you know, not much on UTEP. We, we're not going to play them much um, during the West Division and all. It's our farthest geographical uh, conference USA team. Uh, so we'll see how you know the the time. Uh, difference, you know, they're in central time. They're in central time and mountain time. Oh, boy. Wait. Central. This is embarrassing. They're in central, yeah. Um, so they're, they're, they're in central time. They've got to be close, though, right? Uh, central time. So it's just one hour back. Uh, but you also have the altitude up there, you know, as we saw in Wyoming. Um, these are amateur athletes, you know, going into high places. It's not the easiest thing to, to get used to. Uh, they're two and four. Uh, they beat an FCS team, uh, in credit word, uh, by 10, they beat New Mexico state, uh, was it by three? I, th that was either Mets or left, which is first game. Uh, it pulled the other quarterback, uh, put the other guy in, uh, led the comeback against, uh, uh, the fierce, fierce rival, New Mexico state Aggies, um, able to come back and beat them. Uh, and then, yeah, they haven't been able to do much since then. They lost uh, pretty badly to FIU in Miami a couple weeks ago. So, was in the mountain time zone. They're mountain. Okay, see, and I want to be. That's a, some. That's some Cracker Jack reporting there, Aaron. Well done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a game we should win, boys. At the end of the yeah. day, um, especially with the full playbook and Quez being back, he's confirmed as a starter. He's back. Uh, we got to win. We have to win this game or, it's, Look, you know, it's not going to be pretty. I was kind of joking about this earlier, but as and, – and why I wanted to kind of kind of take a step back uh, in this uh, in this episode and for this week is to let – like, let's, you know, let's, um, let's look at things a little holistically. We could be off. Uh, we Things could be, could be worse off. Now, if we lose to UTEP – I, I don't think we have any reason to record a show for the rest of the year um, <laughs> because it'll be, it'll be, it'll be dark times. Um, it'll be dark times. So yeah, oh, Jack. I, I would say let's continue to, to, you know, again, things aren't, things aren't, things aren't good. Things are, are, are not good. Um, but it's like not I said, this, right is, yeah. this is still a game that we should win as were many of the other games. So who knows what's going to happen? Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be watching the game with uh, one eye closed, um, I think, the whole time, and um, just, just kind of hoping for the best. Yeah. Is that 7 o'clock kickoff here? Uh, uh, yes, it will be 7 o'clock. Uh, oh, 6 o'clock here. Oh, so it starts at 5 o'clock mountain time zone, would it not? That's what I was asking. <laughs> All right, it starts sometime in the evening, guys. How about that? Uh, so, uh, com for the correct time. <laughs> that's a great site to check out all the uh, information uh, the week of a game. Um, yeah. and that's about it. I mean, in Conference USA, is not you know too much going on. No really marquee matchups. Uh, you do have um, Western Kentucky going out in Baton Rouge to play uh, LSU. The four nets, yeah, the LSU four nets, yeah, they, they changed their names recently. <laughs> um, I mean, that, that's going to be very, very interesting to watch. I mean, you, you have to like LSU in that situation, but you got to be curious to see how much, how many points Western Kentucky can put on against a top-notch SEC defense, and if they can stop four net, most likely not, because no one can and nothing will. Um, it's the unstoppable, with the, the, the yeah, the unstoppable. Uh, uh, object uh, um so we'll see what happens all right um well i think we covered about it uh, covered about everything um that we yeah do. um yeah I okay that, that will about do it so um yeah try to enjoy let's, let's try to enjoy this game hopefully maybe we'll get our second win you know our, our second road win of the year 
you know how you know, how crazy it would it be to get uh, two road wins in the, in the in this season. So um, yeah. <laughs> Well done, Jack. Uh, so I guess um, make sure to check us out on Twitter um, at Inside the Burrow. Uh, email if anybody still emails out there, Inside the Burrow 1961 at gmail.com. And uh, always check out FAUOwlsNest.com for all of the latest uh, that's going on uh, in the week with sports. So at FAU. So uh, for Jack and Aaron, uh, I'm FAU for show. Uh, we'll see you next time and go Owls. Go Owls. Go Owls.